Okay, so for this video, we're going to talk about the homework policy and then the exam policy. So there is a mandatory um, online uh, video assignment component for this course. The online video assignments do not count toward the final grain. However, these videos are required to view before accessing the WebAssign assignments. In the modules, everything's locked and you have to view the videos in order to move on. Um, each chapter section covered in the class will have, lecture, will have video lectures and video examples to view. Um, sometimes there's a few sections where I'm able to do both in one video, uh, but most of the time it's multiple videos. Um, during these videos, there may be annotations that pop up. Very few videos have these annotations, and usually these annotations are just to identify like an error that I caught in the video after I recorded it, um, or they're errors that after students have watched my videos, they found the errors and then I come in and I annotate it to make sure like, hey, you know, there was an error that was made here. That way you're studying the correct information. Um, it says your viewing pattern will be recorded in Canvas. So whether you watch the whole video through, you fast forward, rewind, et cetera, all of that, I can see all of that. So if a student fast forwarded and then rewind and then watched it through all of that, I can see everything, okay? Um, and I'm letting you know that the video must be watched all the way through from the beginning all the way to the end in order for the assignment to mark it complete, okay? Um, and then once it's a mark complete, it will allow you to move on to the next item. There are deadlines for the studio. They're not quizzes. I need to remove these word quizzes. <laughs> They're just video assignments. You just watch the video and then it marks it complete, okay? Um, there are deadlines for these videos, so make sure that you adhere to these deadlines, okay? And you watch these associated video assignments before you complete the WebAssign assignments. Um, it says WebAssign assignments, including exam reviews policy. So it says there is a mandatory online assignment component for this course. It's a student's responsibility to gain access to WebAssign by the end of the orientation module part three, due Wednesday. Sorry, that's my alarm. I'm supposed to get up and go but I'm gonna keep recording. <laughs> um, your instructor will provide you with registration information. A student may be dropped with the instructor for non-registration. I mean, you're, if you didn't do the registration, you didn't complete the orientation and you're gonna get dropped for not completing the orientation. Um, but web assign assignments include the exam reviews and are required assignments for each student that must complete to gain the practice needed to prepare for exams. There is a web assign assignment for each section covered in this course, midterm review, and the final review. Before each of the assignment links are the Canvas Studio video, not quiz, but just video assignments, which must be completed before accessing the web assign assignments. Then within the web assign assignment links in Canvas, there will be supplemental resources, like a link to an ebook, a link to PowerPoint slides, um, a link to the publisher's videos. There may be author video links with specific problems in the web assignment, okay? Um, so when you click on the web assign assignment, it'll have a button at the bottom of the page that says, click here to open the assignment in a new window. But above that link is gonna be all of this other information. So you'll have the link to the video ebook, you'll have the PowerPoint slides, and you'll have a link to the publisher's videos. So those three links will be at the top, and then you'll see the web assignment assignment link. Um, so what is that? I'll show you what that looks like. I don't know that I have all that information already in there, but I'm gonna go, just go show you real quick. So this is a web assignment assignment. See how it says web assignment assignment? And if I click it, I don't think I have it in there, but I'm gonna put it in there. Still have a few days before I gotta put it in there. Um, it might not let me in. It's not going to let me in. It's because the course hasn't technically begun yet, so it's not going to let me in. Um, but normally when you click on this, here, look, I'll show you an example for um, a different course. Because I have a summer one course going right now that ended yesterday. So let me show you what their links look like. Now, I did have to change things a little bit, so yours is not going to look exactly the same. But here's a web assigned assignment link. And if I click it, notice how it has a link to the ebook, the link to the PowerPoint, and the link to the Cengage videos. Yours won't have these videos because I'm putting these videos as assignments before you click on the 7.6, right? So before you click on this link, right, I will have the videos. So 
let's look at yours. Your videos are not gonna be in the links. So your videos will not be in here. This is the assignment link. Your videos won't be in here. Your videos will be before. And then once you click here, you're only gonna see these top three links, okay? That's how it will work for our class. I had to change it a little bit because Students were emailing me, how do you do this problem? How do you do this problem? I'm like, there's a video in there that tells you how to do that problem. You just didn't watch it. <laughs> so <laughs> this was my way of trying to make you guys watch the video so that you're not asking me unnecessary questions. But however, if there's something in the video you don't understand, by all means, please message me, right? You did this in the video. How did you do that, right? Ask, ask away, okay? Um, but there were problems that were very, very simple. And if they had just seen the video, they would have known how to do it. And so that's why I had to change kind of the way I formatted it. Um, then let's see. The review assignment links will only direct students to the web assignment. So for the reviews, there's no um, there's no ebook link. There's no publisher videos links. There's no PowerPoint slide link because all of that stuff was for the individual sections. Okay, there's no like, midterm review section in the textbook. There's no midterm review section in the publisher's videos. That, that, a midterm is something I created, right? So it has nothing to do with WebAssign. Um, so there's an assignment that I created in WebAssign, but it doesn't have all of those other supplemental links. Um, however, at the top of the review, it will have the formula sheets that you're able to use during the exams. And I need to point this out because I had students do it in the first semester um, on accident because I guess I didn't make them aware. So I'm making you guys aware now, students should not print these formulas for use during the exams because the formulas will be provided inside the exams. So any papers outside of blank papers to write on are prohibited during exam time. So the only papers you should have during exams is just blank papers that you will show to the camera front and back. This is blank, this is blank, this is blank, right? Um, that's the only thing you're allowed, the only papers you're allowed to have when you're taking exams. And then you're allowed to have your, your PI 36X Pro calculator, and then you're allowed to have writing utensils. Those are the only three things you're allowed to have when you're taking tests or exams. Deadlines for each web assignment exam reviews can be found in the course schedule and the syllabus as well as in Canvas and in WebAssign. Deadlines are everywhere. You shouldn't not know the deadlines. They're everywhere. Um, there are 28 web assign assignments, two exam reviews, and 26 section content assignments. They're required and will count toward the web assign assignment average or 25% of the final grade. The reviews summarize the information covered throughout the unit to identify any correct area to identify and correct areas of confusion or misunderstanding and help narrow focus on cru crucial concepts before examination time. The midterm review will cover the material from chapters two and three, and the final exam review will cover material from chapters four and five. The settings for each web assigned assignment, including exam reviews, will allow 10 submissions of the assignment. So what I do is I say, first view the resources for of information, right? Which can include the required videos that you need to watch, that includes the ebook, that includes the PowerPoint presentation, and that includes the videos from the author. Once you've reviewed all of that, then open the web assign assignment and answer all the questions, okay? If a student finishes answering all the questions and question parts, they may click on submit assignment at the bottom of the assignment. If a student does not finish answering all the questions and questions parts of the assignment and needs to leave WebAssign for any reason, you must click the Save Assignment Progress at the bottom of the assignment. Students should not submit the assignment until all questions and question parts have been answered. This is because students are allowed only 10 submissions for each WebAssign assignment. If any problems are still not answered correctly after the 10th submission, the score will lock and may be adversely affected. So if you somehow submitted 10 submissions, but yet you still had two problems that you didn't get to do, you won't be able to get to do those two problems and you will get zeros on those two problems, okay? That's what I mean by it may be adversely, ad, I can't say that word, adversely affected. There we go. Um, 
give a second, third, et cetera, submission, students must first review the feedback from the prior or latest submission, and then take note of specific problems that were marked incorrect. And they are indicated as such with the red X next to each answer box. Question or question slash answer parts that have been marked correct with a green check uh, do not need to be resubmitted. So when you when you when you try to do the resubmission, it's going to change all the problems. Don't do all the problems. Only do the problems that were originally marked incorrect. Okay. It says the problems that were already marked correct will keep the check marks and their points. Um, earned in the grade summary at the top of the page, even if answered incorrectly on a later submission, okay? If a student previously completed a problem or problem part correctly and has changed the answer to an incorrect answer at some point or at some submission, the green checks will have a red asterisk next to them. However, the points earned in the grade summary at the top of the page will not change to zero. So the fact that you ever earned the point you keep that point for that problem, okay? If you wanna keep doing more, it's on your own volition. It's not because you needed to get the point, okay? It's because you wanted more practice with it. After reviewing the feedback of the prior submission, if any answers submitted again are still incorrect and the student wishes to attempt those problems again to improve their assignment score, they can click on new randomization. So after you review all the feedback, you have to scroll to the bottom and click on new randomization. And what that button will do is it will change the problems that have had any numbers or expressions or functions in red and let you resave or resubmit answers, okay? It may not change problems that don't have any red in them. So like if you have a problem that doesn't have any red typing in it whatsoever, it may not let you correct that problem because you get one shot at answering that problem correct. And if you don't, it just doesn't let you do it anymore. I'm not sure that it's like that for all of them. So we'll have to, to, to figure that out when we get to it. I've never had anyone bring it up, so I'm not sure. Um, and what I see is not the same as what the student sees. So it says, although it changes all the problems, even the correct ones, you only need to submit or resubmit the problems that have still not earned credit. I would go up to the top of the page and look at the assignment. And if there's anybody that still has zero points, those are the only ones that you need to redo, okay? Once the assignment has been resubmitted, students will repeat the process. Review, click new randomization, resubmit answers, um, and repeat. And you just keep doing that until you exhaust, either until one of three things happens. Either one, you get 100 on the assignment, two, you run out of submissions, or three, the deadline passes. So you just keep this process on every assignment. Submit, review, click new randomization, resubmit. Review, new randomization, resubmit. Review, new randomization, resubmit. So it just keeps going in that manner, okay? All new randomization and resubmissions must be completed before the respective assignment deadlines. You can't be like, you know, here comes a deadline and then you click new randomization. And you're like, miss, I was in the middle of a new randomization. Um, but then the deadline locked me. Well, yeah, the deadline is going to lock you. Okay. So make sure that you're doing all of your submissions before the deadlines. Students must submit the assignment to populate the gradebook. So you have to click submit at least once for your, your score to update in Canvas. If you never click submit and all you're clicking is save, 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 you will have a zero when the deadline comes, okay? You have to submit the assignment in WebAssign in order for the grade to navigate over to Canvas. It can take one to 24 hours for grades to sync with Canvas, um, which won't affect much because I don't have any requirements on grades. Like this, You don't have to get a certain grade to move on. You just have to do it, okay? Um, students who miss a deadline for an assignment must follow the late submission policy above. Essentially, you miss a deadline, you either had an emergency and you give me the paperwork and I extend it, or you didn't have an emergency and you're just stuck with whatever score you got. Um, 
extra credit. Students may earn extra credit on every single web assigned assignment, including exam reviews, by submitting the assignments early. If a student submits an assignment at least 24 hours before its respective deadline, the student will earn a 5% bonus to their score. This makes the highest score possible per web assigned assignment 105. Do, and what happens if you have questions while you're completing the web assigned assignment? When a question about a specific problem or solution arises, text the instructor. When texting the instructor, students must include one, a photo of the problem in WebAssign because I need to see which problem you're working on, what numbers or values you got for your specific problem because everyone gets different variations of the problems. So which problem did you specifically get? And so that I can see the directions of that specific problem, okay? So I need to see a picture of the problem inside WebAssign. Just take a photo of your screen. Um, and then second, I need to see a photo of what you've tried or what you've done to attempt to solve that problem, okay? If you have not tried anything yet toward a solution, then you must ask me a specific question. Asking me, can you help me with number five and sending me a picture of number five is not specific enough for me to identify where your confusion lies. So you either need to be asking me a very specific question about that problem or like, like, do I start here? Is this the first step that I should do? Blah, 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 blah. And then I will answer you. Yes, that's the first step you should do. Actually, no, the first step you should do is this, right? Ask a very specific problem, uh, question or try it on your own. And then once you try it on your own, I can figure out where it went wrong and I can specifically tell you where it went wrong, okay? And maybe in so, a lot of times it's just something so simple as like a sign or or you forgot to multiply something or you forgot to bring something down. Usually it's just something so small like that. Um, and so in those cases, it definitely helps if I see your work so I can identify exactly what 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 went wrong. Okay. Um, if there is an example very similar to the problem that you're working on uh, shown in those video assignments. Um, then you will need to state why you were unable to follow along with the example. So if you, you know, this is again to prevent what was happening. People were just texting. I mean, there was a lot of text class in this first summer session and, and that's okay. I don't mind it, but it could have been shrunk a little bit if people had just watched those videos. Um, and so if you are watching those videos and there is an example in that video that exactly covers the problem that you're sending me, I'm going to ask you, is there something in that video that you didn't understand because why were you unable to follow along with that example, right? I already explained how to do that problem. So what is it about my explanation that you don't understand so that I can help you through that, okay? Because that is gonna be more important to you than helping you with that specific, the numbers that you got, right? Um, understanding the content is what's gonna be more important than understanding this specific number, okay? Um, and so then just make sure you tell me like, hey, I tried following that example, but I don't know what you did from here to here and that's why I can't follow it. That's totally valid and just let me know and I will explain. Um, this also helps me to build upon your existing knowledge. So if I kind of have an idea of what you already know, I just got to tweak, you know, little misunderstandings here and there and you're golden. Um, and it also helps me so that you remember and understand what you're doing. So that when it comes to exam time, you're, you're good to go. Okay, so now we're getting into the exam policy. It says there will be a midterm and a final exam. Each one is worth 25%. The exams are proctored using the Respondus lockdown monitor uh, or browser. Uh, students are required to have a webcam access. Failure webcam during examination will result in zero. You cannot use cell phones or Chromebooks to take an exam. Um, exams will be constructed into two parts. Part A will consist of all multiple choices and no paperwork is required or accepted. Do not send me the paperwork for the multiple choices. Um, just don't, I'm, I'm not even gonna look at it. So it's multiple choice. Um, and then partial credit cannot be earned for part A questions. So if you answered C and the answer is not C, then you just don't get credit for that problem, okay? Um, but those problems will count toward 50%. So all the multiple choice problems will count toward 50%, okay? And there is rubrics within each exam that will explain you know, how your grade's gonna be created, okay? 
Um, part B will consist of open-ended questions and paperwork will be required, okay? And partial credit is going to be earned on questions for part B. And then part B questions will also make up the other 50% of the, of the exam scores, okay? Students must access the exams through that browser. There are no exceptions. Download the application will occur during the orientation modules. And then to access the exams, open the lockdown browser application and log into Canvas. Then navigate to the exam in Canvas and click start or begin quiz. After exams have been graded, the instructor will share the solutions. Okay, so I do send the solutions after I've graded everything. And I do tweak the exams from semester to semester. So I'm not worried that you have the answers and then your friend takes a class next semester it's going to be an issue because i change them um so the lockdown browser with respondents monitor will ensure you go through the step pro a setup process before starting the exam this process can take five to 15 minutes so plan accordingly and i'm going specifically through these pieces because they're very important and then there's consequences if you don't do them correctly so it says step one is a student photo. This step is the setup process. We'll use a webcam to take an on the spot photo of the student taking the exam. If the step is not done in a manner where the student's face is clearly visible, good room lighting, no caps, no hats, no sunglasses, no face masks, you have to be able to take the photo and I have to be able to see your face. Um, the student will receive a zero exam score since identification cannot be verified. This is a crucial process to take an exam online. I have to be able to verify that you are who you are and you're the person whose name is on my roster. So it says identification verification. This step in the process will require students to show the camera an ID. It could be a government issued ID, a state ID, state license, uh, Alamo College's student ID. If you go to a different university, you have their ID, but I need an ID, okay? This step is not done in a manner where the student's ID is clearly visible. Again, good lighting. The ID is not too close or too far from the webcam. I need to be able to clearly read the name and see the photo. Um, you can cover up all any other identifying information, like for a government issued ID or a driver's license, right? I don't need to know your driver's license ID. Not that I even look at it or care about it. I don't need to know your address. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to know all that. All I need to know is your picture and your name. OK, um, so if you want to get little stickers and put them on top of that or, you know, sticky notes, post-its, I think um, you can cover it if you want to. I promise I'm not sharing your information. I'm not even really looking at it. I'm just making sure that your face matches the name that's on the ID and then that that face is the same face I saw in the student photo. That's what I'm looking for. OK. Um, it says. Student will receive a zero exam score since identification cannot be verified. So make sure that your ID is clearly visible, okay? Webcam setup. This setup in the process is intended to verify exam security and will require students to place their webcam in a way while taking the exam, their face remains within the frame all times. So if you tend to hover over your paper when you write, which I do and a lot of people do, um, you definitely need to make sure that you place the webcam in a way that it captures your face, both when you're sitting up looking at the computer for the problems and when you're hovering over your paper. Okay, so you're going to have to angle that camera correctly so that I can see your face at all times. Your face has to be in the little box at all times. Um, um, make sure that the student is in location. Make sure the student is in a location that is free of any materials other than their calculator, pencil, tape, pen, and blank paper. Students should not have any additional materials or additional electronic devices around them. This includes notes, books, cell phone. I understand if you have a whole bookshelf on your side, it's going to be pretty obvious if you lean over to grab something from the bookshelf, right? If I don't see that happening, I'm not worried about it. But definitely on like the desk or the table that you're doing your exam on. There should be no notes, uh, no books, no cell phone, no secondary tablets, or laptops, nothing around, okay? No extra computers, you know, right there within reach. Um, if the webcam is not set up properly during exams, as described above, the student will receive a zero exam score since exam security cannot be verified. 
Again, this is a crucial process to take an exam online. Environment check. This step in the process is intended to verify exam security. If a student has a laptop, they need to pick it up and show their writing surface and surrounding area, spaces within reach during the exam. If a student is using a desktop computer, they will need to use a mirror to show their writing surface and surrounding area, uh, surrounding space with, so like if you're having a monitor that has a webcam, right, then you're gonna probably need to use a mirror to show me what's going on. But if you have one of those little webcams that just sits on top of the monitor, you could probably take that off the monitor and move it around and that's okay. Um, it's just if you have a whole monitor <laughs> with a webcam built in that you probably have to use the mirror. Okay, the idea is, is that I need to see your surface area like the, the desk or table or whatever it is that you're working on. Some people do it on their bed. I need to be able to see that space. Okay, and then I need to be able to see anything that's within reach. So I don't need to necessarily see the whole room. I just need to be able to see what you're with, whatever you can reach within arm's length, okay? Because then if I see you leaning over in the camera, I know you're reaching for something that wasn't within arm's length and that would valid, that would, um, that would lead to um, basically a, a violation of the academic integrity policy, cheating essentially, okay? So once you have everything that you need within reach, there's absolutely no reason why you would have to reach outward for something else. Um, so you should be good. Now, again, um, where am I at? If the writing surface area and around the writing and the area around the writing surface area are not both clearly shown in the environment check, the student will receive a zero exam score since the exam security cannot be verified. Again, a crucial process. The instructor is attempting to verify that no unauthorized used materials are within reach during the examination, okay? Um, this also means don't move your webcam too fast because if you do it too fast, I just see a big blur in the recording. And then I can't verify anything if it just looks like a big blur. And you will get practice with all of this because we do have a practice uh, quiz that will make you do all of this. So I will make sure that you know how to do all four of these things before you actually get to the midterm. Um, and then please note, I review every video um, and I tell people to remember that because people will come in there with, you know, not no clothes at all, but sometimes topless. <laughs> and so I really, you know, please wear clothes. I have to look at this. Um, and then you should not be any talking or answering your phone during the examination. There should be no one in the room with you during an examination. The only exception to this is children. Uh, and I specifically children who do not know calculus. So if there's a teenager in there, I don't know if that teenager is taking calculus. I took calculus in high school, so I know it's possible. Um, don't have any teenagers around. But if it's like a four-year-old, I'm pretty sure, that, I mean, unless they're a genius, I'm pretty sure the four-year-old is not going to know um, calculus. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Um, also, I, I can see when you pick your nose, I can see when you're scratching, I can see everything. Just keep <laughs> that in mind. I can't tell you how many times I see people poking their nose. It's fine. Um, I mean, I'm not judging. Everybody has to poke their nose, but <laughs> it's just funny when you see it in the camera. It does make me giggle. Um, students are provided notes during examinations. And again, copies of those notes are provided in the reviews. During exams, students are also allowed to use your scientific calculator. No graphing calculator, right? You have to get the PI 36X Pro. If any unauthorized materials, um, anything outside the calculator, the blank papers, and the writing utensils is used during an examination, the student will receive a zero score since exam security has been violated. A form will also have to be submitted to the vice president's office for violating the academic integrity policy. And you can find excuse me, more details about that policy in the student handbook, but I'm also going to cover it in the next video. Um, when taking exams, be sure to write down work slash steps explanation showing how each conclusion entered in Canvas for B on the exams was derived or developed. Um, here's the rules for the paperwork commissions, because for part B, you're going to have to turn in your paperwork. So for the paperwork, um, do not 
if you do not follow all five of the rules below, you will get a zero. That's how important I need you to follow these five rules, okay? So you basically will have done everything for nothing if you don't follow these five rules. Um, it says, here's the rules one. So one, once the exam has been submitted, students will have 30 minutes to, exam, to scan their paperwork for part B um, and upload it. You must upload it as one single PDF file. Do not submit multiple files or try to submit images, okay? It has to be one PDF file, okay? The process does take about three to 10 minutes, but so three minutes should be ample time to get it done, okay? Um, make sure you view your file after you create it to make sure that it follows all of the rules below. Um, and do not email me your file. Do not email me pictures. Do not text them to me. You have to upload your paperwork where it needs to be uploaded, the way it needs to be uploaded, by the day and time that it needs to be uploaded, okay? And again, for the readiness quiz, this is the only thing that's different because exams, there's a part A and a part B. There's a readiness quiz, which will help you practice this whole test taking process. Um, and then that readiness quiz, it will state in the directions that you have to show work for every single problem. You have to write something down, okay? Um, and make sure that you, that you upload that. And also you probably wanna use more than one page so you can get practice with uploading more than one page. And I think that's all in the directions of the readiness quiz. Now, remember your document must be one file only no multiple documents. So students must figure out how to compile multiple images or multiple documents into one PDF file before you upload it. I highly recommend Cam Scanner because it does give you that ability to just put all the pages in one file. Um, and make sure you practice using the app before needing to turn in any kind of paperwork. You don't wanna be trying to mess around with it when you're in that 30 minute time crunch, okay? The second rule is do not under any circumstance change the paperwork or make corrections to the problems. On, on an exam, students cannot earn credit for corrections, right? When you turn in that paperwork, that's it. You don't get a second try to, to work on it. You just got to do it, okay? Um, and so you don't get a second try. Now, um, and it says, if a student's work does not yield the answer or conclusion provided in Canvas during examination time, no credit can be earned for that particular problem. This includes when a student leaves a problem unanswered in Canvas, but shows a solution on their paperwork. The solution in this case will not be so, uh, accepted. So your stuff has to match. Um, make sure the student's name is on each page and make sure the pages are numbered at the top of each page. Pages of the document should be in order. This helps the instructor Organize the pages when they print the paperwork or even just when I have to scroll through them, they're in order and I don't have to be scrolling up and down and here and there and trying to hunt around for everything. It should be very straightforward. Number one, number two, number three, number four, page one, page two, page three, right? So on and so forth. Um, again, to that end, make sure that your problems are numbered and in order. So I'm gonna have no problem with you bouncing around doing number five, then doing number seven, then doing number one, then doing number 10, like that's no problem. If you're going to do that, make sure you have 10 pages and number one is on page one, number two is on page two, number three is on page three, and so on and so forth. So even if you're jumping around, you can still rearrange your papers in order at the end, okay? Um, otherwise, do them in order. If you're trying to squish it all on one page, do it in order, and number one goes at the top, number two at the bottom, number three below that, so on and so forth. Um, make sure that your 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 file, your, your pictures are not too blurry and not too light. I need to be able to see what you want me to grade. I can't grade it if you can't see it, right? Um, so if you want to earn credit, make sure that I can see it. Here's a big one. Make sure that your pages have a white background. I know sometimes when we take images, you know, you may take a photo and your paper itself might be colored, right? Um, I can't have that, okay? It doesn't translate the same when I print and it doesn't translate the same in Canvas all the time, okay? So make sure that it has a white background. This is another reason why I like Cam Scanner because Cam Scanner has a filter called the magic filter. And if you use that, it automatically changes the background to white. And so it definitely helps in that regard. It just makes it so that I can see what is, what is going on there. Again, the rules make it easy for the instructor to stay organized and it makes it easier for the instructor to grade. 
Um, it also helps me to score and leave feedback in order and faster. It helps me to go so much faster than if I'm having to hunt around for things. When I didn't have these rules before, it was taking me about two to three hours to grade each person's test. Once I put these rules into place, it took me like an hour to grade each person's test. Okay, so it is definitely important that you follow this because I only have so much time I can work each week, right? This is a part-time gig for me in the summer, 20 hours a week. Anything I work over those 20 hours a week is extra. I mean, it's just me volunteering my time um, and I'm not getting paid to, 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 to do that extra work. So I'm trying to set these rules and put these things in place so that that way I can get what I need to get done inside the amount of time that I'm getting paid to get it done, okay? Um, and so that's the whole reason why I have all of these structured rules for the paperwork. Um, and again, remember we already talked about the disability services, they're not retroactive. So make sure that you get your accommodations ASAP so that way if you wanna apply them to the midterm, they have to come in, those letters have to come in before the midterm in order for me to apply the accommodations to the midterm. Um, I'm gonna stop this video here. So this is the end of the third video and I will continue in the fourth video um, very soon.